Hey there, everybody. It's Wayne D. Welcome to the website. It's WayneD.com. And I think you can tell by the Hogan cap that no, this is not Bryson DeChambeau. This is Payne Stewart. Payne won three majors, 11 tournaments, 11 PGA events, among other ones, European. And tragically died when his plane depressurized and crashed. That was just after he won the U.S. Open. So there really is, he was 41 or 2, I think. But there's no telling what this kind of swing could do as he got older. Because this is like a Sam Sneed type of a swing that would pretty much last forever. The mechanics are a little questionable as I'll, as I'll show you, but that's really not the point of Stewart. This, this kind of freedom and flow really something that you just don't see anymore. Very, very what I call old school. So the, the down the line that I have stops a few times in the middle but it's stable and it's a good angle so I can draw a couple lines and show you what he was up to here as far as what his body was doing and where the club was going and as you watch the swing unfold you can just tell how important rhythm and tempo, timing, talent, uh, the ability to square the club with your hands and all those things are are so important because if we watch pain in the backswing we're gonna see we're gonna see things you never see anymore. So uh, I guarantee you, you, you're not finding anybody right now who's moving off the ball that far. And I also guarantee you, you're not finding anybody that's got that much hip turn with his pelvis swaying off the ball that far. I mean, that's like, would not be taught. So if you had a kid doing this, you'd be like, you know, why don't we just tighten that up a little bit, keep the hips in the box, not lift up, keep the head a little less to the right. Why don't we get the club to stop it parallel? Why don't we like not turn the hips so much? <laughs> because there are, there's so few people, Sneed being one of them, that can recover from this and be any good at all, much less great. Now watch this watch this move coming down. It's just so perfectly timed. But the interesting thing is watch how f far his lower body moves to the left in total here. Now, that's a ridiculous amount of lateral movement. And he's setting up to allow that turn to happen because he's got that right foot flared out. Uh, it looks like it's flared out more than the left. It's got a really drags the takeaway. When you watch the tempo you can see the initial movement from P1 to 2 is is really extended and slow. So when I have people whipping the club back, I'll tell them to feel like they take the club back like they're standing in a swimming pool so you feel some resistance. So that's what he does. So he's one of these guys that didn't cock the club until later on in the swing. So that's just full. You can't call that anything but 
all the way back there. And then just to be able to to slide it that much and hit the ball straight, straight enough to win a couple of US Opens. It's pretty amazing. So let's watch it from down the line. So see the takeaway is going to go a little under, but it's going to come up just just enough from there to get pretty much right on plane, but, although a little deep, right? So the club face, he's not doing anything with forearm rotation much there. Just kind of pulling it across him. Now remember, the hips are really turning a lot, which plays into the arms traveling more inward. So with that hip turn and that right leg rotation, he does he does gain a little depth. Right leg looks fairly straight relative to where it started. Doesn't start with a lot of knee flex. He just lets the thing go up. Now, one thing that's incredibly important if you're going to have a swing that turns this much is control of the right upper right arm. So the right arm if it can stay in front a little bit and not pull back behind. So many people that have long back swings, you'll see that right shoulder move toward the target and that messes up their sequence, makes it impossible for them to open up soon enough. But Stewart, and you can see it in some of his iron swings, his right arm is in great shape because he keeps the, the arm somewhat externally rotated meaning that the the arms pointed out this way as opposed to all the way back behind him now if you watch the downswing this is where you, you won't see this either watch the legs now you talk about early extension he's like the poster child for humping so that right leg is just free to roam up toward the ball and you can see all the bending is coming from the upper back while the pelvis is just totally level but once again you know the club is coming down out on kind of out on his left arm and it looks like he's going to be cutting this shot but I don't know if he played a cut all the time but certainly that's not in the box. But like I said, with this kind of tempo and ability, that just shows you kind of doesn't matter. Let's look at a couple of random iron swings. These shots are from some of his major wins. Another thing you can see is a very, very flat left wrist up there, probably uh, edging towards slightly bowed. See, it's a little less like that up here, but pretty flat, I'd say. A couple other swings here. You can see that tempo holds for all of his swings. Iron swing is all the way back to parallel, if not more. You can see that nice neutral wrist on the one over here on the right. Let's watch this one. This looks like it was at Pinehurst. So yeah, I think you'd call that very neutral wrist. Now he doesn't shallow the club a whole lot, you can see, but it doesn't tip over. It goes back a little bit. It pretty much stays right in between his arms. And it looks steep with his legs coming under you, coming under him, and it just doesn't look like that's going to be great at hitting the ball. I mean, you're not going to teach that. But the evidence is there. We know that he was an excellent ball striker. 
You also know he must have been a really good putter. So if you're having some problems with your tempo and you don't feel like you've got a good flow going on your to your swing, you just dial this up. Keep watching it like that. I used to do that with Hogan swing all the time. Try to get that rhythm. Sneed's another one. You can do that just just over and over. Just keep watching it. There you go. Unfortunately, he's not around anymore, but uh, I think he would have had a, a long career, and it was already a great one.